Hello everyone, this is Dr. Nikita here back with part 4 of the 5 video series on brainstem syndromes made easy with mnemonics. So in the early 3 parts, we have covered the general mnemonics, the must-know concepts. Then in, we have covered the midbrain syndromes, the pontine syndromes and in this video we will have the medullary syndromes. And finally to give that uh, cherry on the cake, we will have the KBMD episode today 23rd of December at 5pm on the Unacademy app to assess your understanding of the topic of brainstem syndromes to help you give that MCQ practice and to make sure that you've practiced all the previous year questions that have been asked on this topic. So it's a free live class on the app today at 5 p.m. It's going to be a live quiz with leaderboard. The code to unlock the free live classes is Dr. Nikita Life. Now in the medullary syndromes, first we need to know the cranial nerves that arise from the medulla that helps us localize the lesion to the medulla. So we discussed in part 1 about the pons 4, in the pons 4 and in the medulla last 4. So the last 4 that is cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, 12 arise from the medulla. Out of that which one is located medially is the cranial nerve 12. That is why in the medial medullary syndrome we will see the cranial nerve 12 which will be involved. Lateral medullary syndrome that is the Wallenberg syndrome will have cranial nerves 9, 10, 11. Remember that in lateral medullary syndrome, that is Wallenberg, cranial nerve 12 is not involved. Now look at the image here. You can see that from the medulla, the medial one is the cranial nerve 12. Then we have cranial nerves 9, 10, 11, which are located laterally. Okay, which are located laterally. Now, going to the next one, what artery is involved in the medial and lateral medullary syndrome? We had seen in this part one of the video there, that anterior spinal artery in the medial medullary and we have and we have vertebral artery or its branch pica in the lateral medullary. So the vertebral artery branches, the two vertebral arteries giving the anterior spinal and the pica, that is what we have in medial and lateral medullary syndrome. Then in the medial medullary syndrome, what are the manifestations that we would be seeing? Medial medullary syndrome is also called as Dagerin syndrome. So like we said, medial, the cranial nerve 12, because it's from the medulla, so cranial nerve 12 will be affected. So we will have hypoglossal nerve which goes and that will cause ipsilateral paralysis of the tongue. That means when the patient protrudes the tongue, the tongue licks the wound, that means it gets deviated to the same side. So, ipsilateral tongue palsy, ipsilateral tongue deviation. Then we have the medial lemniscus, dorsal column medial lemniscus, contralateral side. Rest everything is contralateral. So, proprioception vibration goes contralateral. Pyramid, that is a corticospinal tract, motor, medial is motor, so we, we, ha we will have contralateral hemiplegia. So that is what is medial medullary syndrome, degenerate syndrome, anterior spinal artery. Then we have the lateral medullary syndrome. So this is the lateral medullary syndrome where we see everything. So this is the pyramid, this is the inferior olivary nucleus. Remember, this is very, very important, can come as an image-based question. Inferior olivary nucleus and then we have this in the posterior part. So lateral medullary syndrome, side, right? We had seen side may sensory, spinocerebellar tract, sympathetic tract, all of that will go. So spinothalamic tract affected, contralateral pain and temperature from the body below the head. From the face, it is the same side. Ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature from the face because basically this is triterminal spinal nucleus which is going. So cranial nerves go on the same side. So remember, very, very important that in lateral medullary syndrome, that is the Wallenberg syndrome, it is ipsilateral face and contralateral rest of the body, pain and temperature goes. Okay, on the face it's ipsilateral. Nucleus ambiguous, cranial nerve nuclei 9, 10, 11. So in the medulla, that will be the palate, larynx and pharynx paralysis, ipsilateral side. So we will see dysphagia is a very, very important component of lateral medullary syndrome. Vestibular nucleus, vertigo, inferior cerebellar peduncle from the medulla, so ipsilateral ataxia, sympathetic fibers, so there is Horner's syndrome. Remember, sympathetic is on the side, so Horner's is a manifestation of lateral brainstem syndromes, all right? Now, look at this one again for the lateral medullary syndrome, spinothalamic tract, contralateral pain and temperature from the body below the head, spinal trigeminal nucleus, ipsilateral facial loss of pain and temperature, very important. Nucleus ambiguous, 
So you have dysphagia, diminished gag reflex, very, very important, vestibular nucleus causing vertigo, sympathetic causing horners on the same side, and then we have inferior cerebellar peduncle causing ataxia. Now, this is what you see here, that this is ipsilateral horners, ipsilateral pain and temperature from the face is what is going, ipsilateral cerebellar ataxia in the lateral medullary syndrome, Contralateral pain temperature from below the head and you will have the contralateral side involvement of the pain and temperature from the body below the head. Very important. How do we differentiate lateral medullary from lateral pontine based on the cranial nerves? Lateral medulla, cranial nerves 9, 10, 11. Lateral pontine, cranial nerves 5, 7, 8. 6 is medial. 5, 7, 8 is lateral. So you will have facial palsy in the lateral pontine syndrome. How do we remember? This is that lateral medullary. What do we have is lateral medullary is pica causing dysphagia. So lateral medullary syndrome, it is the pica artery which is involved and it has dysphagia as a manifestation. Pica means remember P-I, Pina, C-A is Kana. So basically in lateral medullary pica, Pina and Kana is affected, that is dysphagia. Lateral pontine, we said, is due to Ica. Medial pontine basilar, lateral pontine Ica. Ica has facial palsy. When you read facial ulta, A I C A, Ica is involved. So remember, Ica is facial palsy. Ica also gives labyrinthine artery. So there will be SNHL as a manifestation as well. So remember, this is how we'll differentiate lateral medullary from lateral pontine. Dysphagia in lateral medullary, facial palsy in lateral pontine. Very, very important. Now, this is a review question for you. Do let me know the answers in the comments. All of the following are features of Wallenberg syndrome, except which of the following? Let me know the answers in the comments. We will have many more MCQs with a lot of twists and turns, image-based questions. MRI images integrated to assess the understanding of brainstem syndromes today at 5 p.m. On the app, it's going to be Con Banega MD, that is a live quiz on brainstem syndromes with all the PYQs being discussed. So I'll see you there at 5 p.m. Make sure you watch all the part four, the initial part four videos, and then we'll have the final part five quiz on the app at 5 p.m. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Take care and keep studying, keep revising, and keep winning. Thank you.